Oh, right, Lowlands Britain now, and we're looking at a physical feature in the Lowlands that the examiner might want you to describe, maybe even explain, and also another of the geological cross sections that the examiner may want you to be able to draw. So let's look at it. This is the feature we're looking at. It's basically a chalk hill that goes up steeply one side and down less steeply on the other side. The steep side here, we've got a white horse on. I think it's the Westbury white horse. Um, and the other side sort of gently dips away. So it can be drawn like this. You've got the steep side called a scarp slope. It is an escarpment. And then you've got the dip slope sloping off, okay? The flat valley floor, often where you're gonna get springs, um, spring lines, so beginnings of streams, will be good for arable crops, okay? And it's also gonna be where settlements will be. You'll often get a road uh, running along the line where the, the veil meets the scarp there. So let's see if we can explain it. In the southern Britons, we've got younger rocks and they're sedimentary rocks compared to the uplands, and they've been deposited horizontally, okay? They're softer than the uplands. However, despite being deposited horizontally, they've been pushed up into what's called an anticline because of the alpine orogeny. Africa is rotating, pushing into Europe, making the European Alps, but in the southern parts of England, those that energy has gone out and has made us these small undulating hills. Now, there's not enough stress and pressure here to have created um, metamorphic rocks. We're still saying these are sedimentary rocks, but they have been sort of moved about. So they've no longer are they horizontal. They've got angles of dip. OK, you can see that the, uh, the geology, the plates have pushed them up at an angle. Now, even though the chalk is physically stronger, than the clay and the green sand, it's eroding, partly because it's at the top of the hill, but also partly because cracks opened up, uh, or geos, lines of weakness, when the, um, the erogeny was happening, when it was being moved up. So over time, it's getting eroded now. Um, but the minute it gets through to the clay, the clay is going to erode very rapidly. So too is the green sand. Okay, so coming up is one of those classic cross sections they might ask you to draw. This is a geological cross section of an anticline. Okay, so you've got the different layers of strata, sedimentary rock. Here it's the chalk, it's the clay, it's the green sands, and it's the Wil Wilden series. And that's going to do pretty much all of southern Britain, uh, but certainly the Weald with the south and the north downs. That would, you'd smash that. So let's now zoom in though to see if we can figure out how we're getting this uh, scarp and dip slopes. So we're just now looking at the relationship between the chalk and the clay here. The clay is eroded and it's flat, okay, it's eroded right down. The chalk, even though you could scratch it with your thumbnail, relatively to the clay it's much stronger, physically harder, so it's now sticking up and out. You've got this cliff though that we're going to call the scarp uh, side because of the way that the anticline has eroded and the strength of the rock. The dip slope, sloping back gently away, is totally due to the anticline because of the way that it was um, pressed up by the alpine orogeny. The flat bit where the clay is, we're going to call the veil. Okay, so please be able to explain how we get scarp and dip slopes on an escarpment. Um, and that's also giving you the veil of the clay. Okay, and there going back to you is the classic example. Good luck.